These boys are about to be introduced to one of the most unstable vessels devised, the single skull. Few Etonians have rowed before they arrive at the school. It's easy. Their introduction to the sport, which is supervised by boys as well as beaks, can be an unforgiving one. People who have a ducking first tend to do best in the end. It's, uh, they, um, they get a bit more confidence after they've fallen in once and try a bit harder and concentrate more. Whereas if you don't fall in first time, you get overconfident. Then you fall in when you think you're rather good. <laughs> and uh, it puts you off for a rather long time. I'll give you a rope and you can just see if we can tow you along to uh, the bubbles gone at the front. I just suddenly fell in. Lost my balance and fell in. Hello, what happened? Um, I fell off my seat and then I let go of the oars, so I fell off. How did you feel? Don't ask. Please don't but ask. But you're dry. That's one thing at least. Is this your first time? No, second. Yes? Yep. And how did you like it? That's brilliant. It's terrifying. Those boys who best mastered its secrets can expect eventually to graduate to the eight, the leading oarsman of the school. But they have to work hard to keep their place in the boat. Attention! Set! Go! Hold tight. In early summer, the eight travel up to the Water Sports Centre at Nottingham to take part in the National School's rowing competition. It is the culmination of months of hard work. Well, some of these boys have been training since they were, uh, certainly training in a purposeful sense, since they were in E block in the second year. <clears throat> of course, they started rowing most of them when they are in F block in the first year. Uh, so really, they've been training for three or four years, what you could say. <clears throat> so it's, it's a long-term training program to build up both the state of the body and the state of the mind. A warm-up run is followed by a brief moment of mental preparation, and then the conclusion of four years' training is upon them. There doesn't seem to be any catching Ethan, who continues to dominate, making 37, now perhaps two and a half lengths ahead of Kingston Grammar School. But it's looking like a dogfight for the minor placings. Kingston Grammar School is, because they'll get second. They've got half a length on St. Paul, and Malik cruising towards the line. And was it worth all the training? Uh, it's always worth the training. I mean, that, the stakes get higher and higher the more training you do. We've been training since September, and, and if you lose, you feel it. If you win, you just love it. Eton does not have a conventional sports day or open day like other schools but holds instead one of the biggest picnics imaginable, known as the 4th of June, but rarely held on that date. On the day before, the groundsmen put the finishing touches to already pristine playing fields. Lines are straightened, and the founder gets a polish. The school cannon, a frequent target of pranksters, receives a protective coat of oil. We've had it painted orange and red in the past, but in the last couple of years we've overcome that and stopped the boys from doing it uh, by putting oil on it. And then if somebody gets up to the boys, get up to any tricks, then we've got them because we know who's done it. Beneath the busts of famous old Etonians, Sixth Form Select rehearse the speeches they will recite the following day. In Dr. War's wise hands, guided along. The art school holds a preview party. Unusually quiet this year on account of the alcohol-free wine. When did you do this one? Was it was all part of that project with the self-portraits. The pipe band, normally about 20 strong and made up of the scions of some of Scotland's oldest families, warm up before their performance in the tattoo. Pipe Major realises at the last moment that some of his troops are in danger of breaching the oldest of traditions. Whip off your insulation. Have you got anything on underneath? I have got nothing. Whip off your insulation. Things will go wrong if you're wearing it. Whip off your insulation. Why? Any mistake. Where are you going, Angus? The offending underwear duly dispatched, 
the rehearsal is interrupted by the arrival of a helicopter. About a hundred boys are in the cadet corps, rather less than in previous generations, but in line with the shrinkage of the armed forces. What are they all going for? We'll start coming out. They're for the provost's wife and the headmaster's wife. It's going to be How good. are you going to deliver them? Um, as in the sort of, uh, what's it called, milk tray ad. So we're going to present them after we've hit the deck. The 4th of June is celebrated with flowers, and the first people to arrive in the morning are the flower sellers. Most of the boys buy carnations, which they sport proudly in their buttonholes as they wait on the pavements for their parents. But the rowers, who star later in the celebrated procession of boats, fill their hats with the blooms of summer. How long have you been doing this? Well, my father, he passed away in 1985, and he'd done it since he was 14. He was 75 when he died. Two days before he died, he said, don't forget the boys eat, and he said, I want you to carry on and do it for me. So we've done it ever since. We still do it. We don't, we don't do it for the money. We do it because my father's asked me to keep the tradition. Each of the 25 houses holds its own garden party for parents and boys. By lunchtime, several thousand cars have gathered around the cricket field for the family picnics, which are the centerpiece of the day. The day was originally held in celebration of George III's birthday. While not greatly liked in America, he was much loved at Eton. After his death and the succession of George IV, whom the boys disliked intensely, Etonians doubled their efforts, making the day an even grander affair. <laughs> After lunch, the rowers prepare their boats at Master's Boathouse. Okay, stroke side ready. Bow side, and go. Crowds gather on the bank, rescue boats take their positions, and the crews begin their procession downstream from the Windsor Castle end. the crews wear goes back to Trafalgar, and the procession of boats itself puts the unsteadiness of the skull and oar to their ultimate test. Although you can wait many years before you see a crew fall in. Thirty years ago, a famous headmaster of Eton, Robert Burley, said that his ideal Old Etonian would be the head of Harwell Research Station who had learned Greek as a boy and now read the lesson at Harwell Parish Church. The chapel still occupies an important part in the life of the school, 
and the music played there offers a time for reflection. Modern Eton, like modern society, also wills itself to believe that social service can be an adequate substitute for religion. Well, every Wednesday evening, a group of boys has gone down to visit the social club, Slough Men Camp, for the last 15 years. And they go down there in order to help entertain the 60 to 70 or 80 even, people of all ages, um, physically and mentally handicapped, who turn up there. And they do this through playing cards, dancing with them, just chatting with them, playing games. Right. It's very easy to go through Eton and well, you can avoid making any sort of social commitment quite easily. You can't avoid now being aware of it. It's impossible for a boy, I think, really, to go through Eton now and be unaware of social problems of the world outside. The members here, they wait week by week for the boys to arrive. And when the boys leave in June and they're not coming back again till September, I have all this anticipation week after week because most of my members have no concept of time because it brings such another dimension to their lives. Tonight you have seen, especially the ladies here, dancing with the Eton College boys or playing games, table tennis as you saw. These ladies don't have the opportunity to mix with normal young people and it's a great excitement to them. And the other thing that makes it especially good is that the boys that come here from Eton treat all of my men as an equal and that doesn't really happen in the rest of the society. Ironically, Eton today is probably less Philistine and more aesthetic, less narrow and more cultural than at any time in its history. Gladstone, whose room overlooked the churchyard, said of his time at Eton that the system of education there was quite without merit, apart from the rigor and relentless accuracy of the teaching. There is nothing mechanical about the teaching methods employed at Eton today. Now, this book, Poems by John Keats, was really written by an adolescent. And here we've got Keats's death mask. It's quite remarkable. There are about three copies of this still in existence, of which probably this is the finest. Now, we'll be very careful and we'll take it out. And we'll put it down so you can look upon the face of Keats. The school now teaches an immense range of languages, but not because languages are the keys with which to unlock the great civilizations of the world. Eton teaches languages because they make Etonians more employable. So you need the general purpose apology in Japanese, don't you? Can you remember what that is? Crystal Palace, che si chiama Chris Armstrong, sarà giocherà in Italia l'anno prossimo e lo pagheranno 10 miliardi. Koyis, Tayib, Ashuf kun bukran shawa. Na, na, The reason we teach Arabic is that in 1986, a thing called the Schools Arabic Project was founded with a view to introducing Arabic into independent schools and we hope to maintain schools as well, simply because we felt there was a huge need for Arabic speakers to go out and get jobs in business and commerce. Locate the center. One field in which the school would like to see more Etonians make their contribution is industry. It is a long-standing criticism of the public school system that it fosters an anti-industrial and anti-scientific ethos. Science teaching came to the public schools relatively late and there was a particular bias against those aspects of it which bordered on mechanics or engineering. The fact that Eaton now vaunts its pro-industrial and pro-scientific credentials is the clearest evidence that it has abandoned its traditional role as an institution for the gentrification of the business classes. The School of Mechanics started in 1879, but it wasn't until 1973 that a full-time master was appointed to actually teach in the School of Mechanics. And the School of Mechanics then moved to this present building and uh, we really started links with industry. And it's the, really the links with industry that, that make us the interface between Eton and the real world. Because a lot of Etonians still think that going into the city and making money in this way is better than actually working for a living and producing goods. And this is the thing we're trying to fight. 
If Eden once taught that industrialism and science were pursuits alien to the English spirit, best left to Americans and Germans, it does so no longer. Eaton's eye is now as firmly on foreign shores as it is on England's green and pleasant land. I think Eaton has shown that it is not just a school in Britain which is part of Europe, but it wants to be part of a much, much wider stage, mm. and I suppose to put it uh, in slightly trite terms, namely the world stage, mm. and hence its links now with Asia, with China, with Japan, its international scholars, which have to come from throughout the world. They, they're not just coming from Eastern Europe, they're coming from throughout the world. And Eaton's also had a very strong attachment with America for a number of years. As part of the 1990 celebrations for the 550th anniversary of the school, the Provost and Fellows founded a number of international scholarships, uh, which I now run, which means we can have up to six boys from various countries in the world on full scholarships or half scholarships and the idea is to give them a feeling for English schools and I'm planning this coming year to have uh, two more Poles, a German, uh, a Chinese boy, um, uh, an American boy and another Japanese and I would very much like to get into the Palestinian occupied territories as well. I think that can be done. I suppose so. It's not so um, elitist as it used to be, I think. I think it's supposed to be uh, quite uh, conservative, etc. But you can also meet uh, uh, supporters of uh, the Socialist Workers' Party here. So it's not so, um, it's not so pure upper class and conservative place. I was also surprised with the attitude towards me and uh, etc. It was quite nice and friendly. And I was uh, rather surprised that I, I couldn't find a snowberry or something. One feature that is key to Eaton's academic success is that each boy not only has his own room, but he also has two tutors, one being known as a private tutor. The tutorials, which are known to Etonians as private business, take place in the hour between afternoon divs and supper. You know, thing like the French Revolution, King's dead, um, aristocracy is shut up, the church is closed, lots of people bleeding in the streets. This must have big causes. Is that true? Must they? There are two. At first, the privates offered a chance to relax. Well, not necessarily but as the years pass, boys used them to hone their ability to talk and to argue and develop an ease with adults. Mr. Kitson is a history beak. His pupils are greeted by the following message on his front door. Push open the door and walk in. If it is not on the latch, knock. There is no need to ring the bell, which is maddeningly strident. And for a dog who died long ago, but whose spirit lives on, if the dog is outside the door, kindly do not let him in. Guard against him artfully insinuating himself or even an extremist trying to use force, for he is a tricky and determined character. Once they're behind the door, Mr. Kitson tells them that the television is the enemy of civilization. Eaton's greatest strength, I think, is providing for each individual everything that he wants to do to the highest standard. Somebody came in and said they'd like to, do the to play the steel drums, so I said, all right, if you can find two other boys who will play, like to play the steel drums, and you can tell me where I'm likely to find a teacher, and you can tell me where I'm likely to find a steel drum for you to learn on, then yes, I will. Next day, in he came. Two other names, a list of teachers, list of manufacturers who provide steel drums. So I said, all right, and we've now got seven or eight boys who are doing the steel drums. The day of the public school boy hero is over. The great thing about Eton being um, a large community which is taking people from many different spheres and encouraging them to perform well in many different spheres is the fact that your hero can only be a hero for, today, for, the, for the day. The school play was on this weekend. Today, tomorrow, for the rest of this week, boys will strut around 
being congratulated on what a wonderful school play, but by next week it will be the college concert. It will be the 11, it will be the 8 in Nottingham. What we're doing is, I hope, sowing all sorts of seeds in the minds and spirits of the, of the boys, which will blossom, some will, some won't, in, in the future, and it blossom in, in different ways. I believe that they're lucky and privileged to be here, that we try to provide a centre of excellent education. Excellence without arrogance was what I said would be my slogan when I became provost, what I hope that we produce. But if they can, with excellence and without arrogance, go into every field of activity, that, I believe, can only be beneficial for the country as a whole. In the past, Eton was perceived to be insular and its distinctive esprit de corps only heightens that misconception. It is, however, this very individual spirit, born of a common bond that guarantees Etonians are not insular. If you say that Etonians are complacent, there must be a lot of truth in it. The difficulty is to be sure whether in any educational system you can edit it out. After all, they need to be given confidence, they need to be given some sense of their own judgment, they need to be given some sense that they count. And this is bound to mean that some people won't look beyond that. If it's a good school, there must be quite a lot of subversion, quite a lot of undermining of what they think they're at, so that they come out of the place open-minded. Now, I don't know how many do come out genuinely open-minded. I would have thought that um, one would like to think that the people do, that they are willing to accept completely different backgrounds, completely different ideas from the ones they've come up with. The best ones do. I think any uh, educational institution is uh, interested in individuals. It wants those individuals to be themselves, to find themselves, to fulfill themselves, to be happy about being themselves. But uh, at the same time it wants individual folk to rise above themselves, to do things that they never dreamt of doing or never thought that they could do. So it's uh, partly a question of uh, being what you are partly a question of uh, daring to be more than what you thought you could be. Whatever paths Etonians choose to follow, they all take leave of the school at 18 by signing a leaving book. Within the same tradition, new boys sign an enrolment book. As Prince William went to sign in on his first day, joining the many tens of thousands who've done so before, he passed the founder's statue, offering for a brief moment a rare glimpse of once and future kings. If dreams can be combined with duty, then Prince William's chances of a happy and effective adult life will owe much to the foundation that he is about to receive over the next five years. The school has amply demonstrated that it is large enough to cope with all individuals and to find something in which each of them can succeed. The privacy it offers, the responsibility with which he is entrusted, the fellowship of other boys and the easy relationship it offers between boys and weeks should, we hope, be sufficient to withstand some of the pressures that most 13-year-old boys are never required to undergo.